Hello, welcome to or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Christine. I like to read dark and disturbing things and I love getting me some book mail. Today we're going to be opening up my August book subscription boxes. Let's check it out. to call anything fun you get in the mail mailbox magic if it's not a bill if it's not junk mail it's mailbox magic it doesn't matter if you ordered it for yourself it doesn't matter if someone sent it to you it is magical to open your mailbox and just have something fun to brighten your day and that's what we're going to open today i have more packages than usual because well, let me just go through with what I have and what we're going to open today. This just arrived yesterday and this was the last package I was waiting for. This is my Nightworms package for August, which is a horror book box subscription that you've seen me open many times on this channel. Next is a brand new book subscription called Your Paper Quest. I did get one of these last month as just like a sample to show you guys and open up, but this is the first official US subscription for this, for your paper quest that I have in my hot little hands. I have my pick for my Aardvark book box. And last but not least, I have something that I've never gotten before. I have an Evernight box which is from the creators of Illumicrate, but it is like their quarterly horror books, sub horror book subscription where it's just a book. I have been on and off the wait list for this because anytime my name came up uh, where I could subscribe, I was kind of at a point where I was like trying to cut back on my book box subscriptions, but I could tell from the spoilers what this was going to be and I had to get this one. So this is gonna be my first ever night book box. Actually, let's just start there. Um, just so you know, these are all paid for myself. I just like opening them to share them with everyone so you can get an idea for what kind of book subscriptions there are there are out there. If there's anything that you think, you know, might be kind of your thing. Because I've spent a lot of time and money with book subscriptions that I realized didn't really fit my tastes and it took me a while to learn that. And I think it's okay to try new things and dip in and out of subscriptions. So. First, we're gonna open this Evernight. I did kind of, I saw people posting this all over the place. So it is not going to be a complete surprise to me, but while I kind of saw it in passing, I tried not to look too closely at it. So what we have here is just the book. And you could probably tell from this what it's going to be because everyone has been talking about this book. I've already read this book. I loved it. It is going to be The Eyes Are the Best Part by Monica Kim. And let's just enjoy this together. <laughs> this is crazy amazing. I'm not going to talk about this book only because I have talked about it before. Look at all those eyes there. And I feel like it's been everywhere. I will post my review down below, but I gave this four stars. <laughs> okay, I did not realize that the naked hardcover. Oh, it went there. Look at that. You know what's funny is that I have a regular copy of this book on my shelf right now. And my husband is like... What's up with the eyeballs? Just wait until he sees this on display. He'll probably never go into He'll never go into this room. A little squish squish action there. And just a little tasty taste right there. Oh my God, even the, look at the, the sprayed edges. I know a lot of people that are really squeamish about eyeball horror and oh, this is very much like a good for her descent into madness type book um, with a lot to say and I really enjoyed this. This is gorgeous. This is a great way to start off this subscription and yeah, I guess I'll be getting this every three months now so it's going to be a long wait I guess in between but man beautiful i love it 
Next, we're going to open my Aardvark book, book box. And Aardvark is very similar to Book of the Month where their choices come out every month and you get to pick. So this is not a surprise. You are picking your, your book choice and you can skip if you want to. I have to say though, Aardvark has been freaking killing it with the horror choices lately. The last few months, man, we've had, oh, Eyes Are the Best Part was a choice a few months ago. And Stephen Graham Jones, uh, I Was a Teenage Slasher was a pick last month. And this book I was currently listening to when the choices came out, like I was almost done with this book on audio. And I already knew that I had wanted to purchase this book. So when I saw this, I was like, yes, because the pick was Chuck Tingle's Bury Your Gaze. I gave this five stars. I loved it. I will also link that down below. Um, if I really love a book, if a book is four or five stars, I usually want to keep it in my collection. So I had to have this. I think that I will reread it as well. It always comes with a, a bookmark with a little ard bark there. And they're hard. Let's see what the color. Ooh. So they're hard covers. I like this. Our, I don't know what they make it out of. The Tears of Unicorns, but it is so soft and buttery. And I really like this color combination because of course it reminds me of Halloween. And we have, this is better than the original because I think the original hardcover is just black and boring. And this is beautiful. Um, so that is the hardcover. Bury your gaze. I love the color choices. You could tell they took the colors from here. And if you've never tried Aardvark um, book box before and you want to give it a try and you live in the U.S., I do have a code that you can get your first box for $4 and free shipping. So if you want this book, you can go there and get it right now for $4. No shipping. It only works if you have never tried it before. So I will put my code down below and I always have in the descriptions, but I always kind of forget or feel weird about promoting myself, but there are other links down there. Like if you wanted to check out my Instagram or my Goodreads or any of that. So highly recommend this book. It's probably gonna be on my top 10. Okay, next up is Your Paper Quest, which is brand new. I love that they put your name on it. I don't know why, it's cute. Um, so this is very much about promoting self-published and indie um, authors and they have a different theme and genre every month. So this is not a horror subscription. This could be romance one month. It could be fantasy the next month. It could be horror one month, but they pick a theme every month and then you get generally two books averaging around 600 pages. So I think it's always ended up being two books, but maybe if they had like one really big thick boy maybe it would only be one it's going to average about 600 pages and you also will get a a qr code in each one so that you could join a book club and you can talk about the books with other with other your paper quest subscribers so very small right now which i like because some of these book subscriptions have gotten so huge that to be in part of any of these discussions is just overwhelming to me and i like the smaller community so I did already sneak a peek in here because there's no way I was going to sit here and not know what it was for the last two weeks. But the theme, it says, summer is often a time spent with friends and family visiting places near and far. We wanted to emphasize this by focusing our stories around the sense of place. So it's not so much a genre, but a theme. And I kind of like that. So we have our QR code at the bottom of this. And because it's been a few weeks since I peeked in here, I'm going to... I don't remember exactly what's in here. So the first book we have is called Palace Lost by Jake Morrison. And this looks very sci-fi to me, which is, oh, I really like, I actually really like the back of this. That's pretty. Um, I have been wanting to, I keep saying this and when am I going to do it? I don't know, but I want to start dipping my toe into sci-fi and seeing if it's for me. Um, especially if it is like sci-fi, almost horror-ish or in, on the dark side. I'm not going to be able to say this character's name. Um, when Ensign Vasily Nikonov's ship happened upon a drifting derelict, he had no idea how drastically his life was about to change. 
Not only had the crew been killed in an impossible manner, the captain of the ship left a reference to a child's tale of the lost colony of Pallas. Elsewhere in the 15 systems, scholar Elliot Charter gamely starts his own fool's quest to prove that Pallas is real. Armed with nothing but naivete and knowledge, he hires mercenary Captain Scaldi <laughs> Alf I'm not going to try it, to help him on his quest. Things quickly spi spiral out of hand, leaving them all wondering if Pallas was truly lost. So this does, to me, sound dark and sci-fi and almost horror-ish. Um, so I am excited to check that out, actually. The next one, I don't remember what it was called, but I do remember loving the cover. Because if you can see a theme here, this is called The Final Season by Andrew Gill Smith. And I can see by his skull shirt on the back that he has great taste. Okay. It's one thing to know that the end is coming, quite another to know the exact date and right down to the nanosecond. Such is the unhappy fate of the inhabitants of Ruxos IV, a once thriving planet that has lived under the doom of inevitable apocalypse for millennia. Their entire philosophy of life may be summoned up with the phrase, I'm just going to put it here because there's no way. Look, there's too many X's in there. Which is, in most language translates to something along the lines of, what's the bloody point? Unbeknownst to the poor Rexans, the predicament has also been a subject of the long-running and most successful reality television series in galactic history, now translated in over 200 million languages with closed captioning. With the end of the world just around the corner, the show is entering an all-important final season. Everyone knows how difficult it is to pull off a satisfying finale. Such stakes even fill the most hard-boiled Gallywood executives with fear and trembling. Join three characters that I cannot say their names, a cast of colorful characters as they battle the notorious showrunner, all while tackling the big questions of life's meaning and purpose with wit, warmth, and dare I say, optimism. The final season is The Truman Show Meets The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, with a dash, dash of PG Wodehouse. I'm not, I don't know what that is. Um, this sounds fun. It sounds like it's going to have a lot of humor in it and just a silly time, which I think might be a good way for me to also start into the sci-fi adventure. Humor or horror or something that's not overwhelmingly uh, sci-fi, although those names are a little scary to me. But really, are they any scarier than fantasy names? No. I think I will probably read this one first. I, oh, I really want to like do a sci-fi reading vlog, but I know that like fall is coming up, Halloween's coming up. When am I going to do this? I don't know. I got to try to squeeze it in, but this looks really fun and I'm excited to get to it. Okay, last but not least, we have the Nightworms package. Where are my scissors? I do know one of the books that's in here. Well, I always know the books because I look them up so I don't buy them, but then I usually forget. But this one I do remember because I received an ARC for this and I did want to read it this summer. But once I saw that I was getting the book, I'm like, ah, uh, you know, just wait, wait a few weeks and get the book and actually read your book instead of just having it on your shelf. So I will still write my Net Galley review and everything. But I have been seeing this book around a lot of places. Okay, let's start with our little goodie bag. We usually get like some sticker or a magnet or a bookmark or all three and sometimes a little drink. Oh, there's a lot of bookmarks in this one. Okay, okay. So the main bookmark here is the theme for August and it's No Way Out. And then we have this wonderful bookmark. I really like their bookmarks. Um, I like the artists that they use for putting these together. And I don't know, I use their bookmarks a lot. But there's quite a few in here because some of them must be, maybe this is the book we're getting. I'm not sure. Ooh, this is a book I saw. I never remember who, but I saw um, someone talking about it in their most anticipated releases. And the cover of this one really had me interested. Necrology is a commanding incantation, a com captivating read that 
casts its magic from page one. Let its spell wash right over. And this third one is the book that we're getting. So I'm just going to hold off a second and show you. It looks like we got some tea called Creeping Dread of the Nightworms. Caramel, caramel, which one do you say? Caramel or caramel? I feel like I use them interchangeably. And stone fruit. I have no idea what that is. Uh, Riddle's Tea Shop. We have gotten tea from them before. I usually drink tea just when it's really cold and I feel like I cannot warm up, but I am definitely more of a coffee person. Um, but after a certain time of day, I will drink tea. So we have that. And then we have a couple of signed book plates. This is creepy. This is our sticker. That was pretty creepy. And, oh, I got two because I think they were stuck together. Um, so lucky me, because this is really cute. This is a magnet and it says Campfire Story Champion. And I love ghosts, so I really love this. That is so cute. This has actually got to be one of my favorite magnets that we've gotten so far. All right. The first book. This is the one I did not know about. And it's sealed. So anyway, that is the bookmark that we got. Flowers from the Void. In this debut story collection, Gianni Washington opens portals, bridging the strange and the lonely to the gruesome and the intimate. So there's our bookmark. And yeah, I never got one that's sealed like this, but this is the cover here. And it says, oh, the glare. Let me open this. Okay, now you could probably see that better. 13 dark tales are told through the lenses of black female and queer narrators, among others, which burrow deep into the heart of the Gothic to challenge the conventional nightmare. Flowers from the Void unburies a haunted labyrinth of chilling alternative alternate realities eerily similar to our own. A high school freshman is lured into a sinister pact with a classmate that will cost him more than he could ever imagine. A grieving African witch prepares for initiation into the 17th century Salem coven of white women. A girl with no shadow befriends one. Ooh, that sounds, I like that one. Empathy and horrors collide to create a grimy discomfort that will never quite wash off. Otherworldly creatures, malevolent acts, and devastation consume these pages as Gianni Washington resurrects the skeletons of our closets and commands them to run amok with a new zest for the macabre. Um, I like the words that were describing this. Uh, very, very strong word choice. Um, I am not the biggest lover of short stories, but I'm trying, trying to be better. I mean, this is only a little bit over 200 pages and I'm sure that I'm missing out on a lot by not reading short story collections. So maybe I should try to make an effort to, you know, read a couple short stories a week and make my way through these books. But I often just forget, like I'll start them and then I kind of forget because I get invested in other books. But this and novellas, I seem to look over for some reason and I don't know why. And the one that I knew about, ooh, shiny cover. Uh, Heads Will Roll by Josh Winning. I don't see too many shiny covers like that anymore. Usually they're like that material that picks up all your fingerprints. So we have some roasting marshmallows. We have a camping theme here. And it looks like perhaps a slasher. It's been a while since I read the synopsis, so let's check it out. Willow's worst nightmare was being canceled, but the shadows in the woods of Camp Castaway might destroy more than just her reputation. After sitcom star Willow tweets herself into infamy and stumbles blind drunk into a swimming pool, her agent ships her off to Camp Castaway. Nestled deep upstate New York, Castaway is a summer camp for adults who are desperate to leave their mistakes behind. No real names, no phones, no way to call for help. Willow's fellow campers seem okay. Her favorite actress is even here, making a s'more. And did that jader, jaded writer Danny just wink at her? But the peaceful vibe is shattered when one of the campers vanishes and Willow finds a mutilated doll's head in her room 
with a threatening message rolled up inside. Love it. Terror grips the group and campers begin to lose their heads, literally, and disturbing past deeds come to light. Is Willow about to get cancelled all over again, this time for good? Um, this sounds very interesting. I like that it's a camp for adults and we're kind of going away from like a teenage camp or a kids camp. I do like that. My only concern is that we're going from a celebrity type status and that can be done in a very fun way, I think, as long as we're not taking things too seriously. Um, but I kind of hate celebrities. <laughs> I hate celebrity culture. I hate all of that. So I'm hoping that it's very tongue in cheek. I'm hoping that we have some fun kills and that we're just having fun with it. Um, yeah. I don't know that I've heard anything like solid back on this, but I feel like the the vibes around it seem all positive so far from what I've seen people posting. And I'm not sure if it's just because they just picked it up and they have this fun cover or if people have read it and really enjoyed it yet. I try not to look too much into things because I don't want to be influenced um, on my opinion or how I feel about the book when I read it. So I like to go in blind usually and I like to go in with a like fresh like zero expectations so my only concern is the celebrity thing but that can go either way Whew. all right that is all of the mail <laughs> that I have purchased for myself and I think that's all I anticipate on getting this month I don't think anything is coming in the last half of the month so I wanted to do it all at once and just show you everything I got if you're looking to try a new book subscription, I would highly recommend giving your paper quest a shot just because I really love the intention behind it all. And I will definitely be reading some of these stories and getting back to you and letting you know, you know, I haven't read any of them yet, but I really like the idea behind it. And I would love to see that kind of thing grow. If you're looking for a horror subscription, I, I don't know if I've ever been disappointed with Nightworms. Other than I for a while was getting duplicates because I was getting other books. But once I started seeing the the spoilers on their Instagram, not a problem. And it's run by two really cool women. They also have amazing Instagram. So I'm going to put their Instagram down below because uh, they are always putting out lots of lesser known horror books in different genres, like subgenres within horror to give you a, like kind of an idea of what you might like to read. And I really enjoy following them. So I'm going to leave their Instagram handles down below just so you could check them out if you don't already. All right, you guys, that's all I have for my mailbox magic. Thank you for opening it with me. It's always fun to feel like I'm opening it with you guys. If you've made it this far in the video and you don't have anything to say, but you want to say hi, because I just like to see who's here. Why don't we leave a tombstone emoji down below for a barrier gaze, which again, five star read really enjoyed this and it also has a great audiobook if you're more into listening to to your book so check that out and thanks for watching stay spooky